a lot has happened because of blank someone asked for in my life and I think all of our lives respectively so like I just start thinking like what would be different if March 2020 never happened and life as we know it continued on without a hiccup Mm -hmm. welcome back to talking about blanks the show about the show where if you can (laughs) remember blanks we can talk about it i think that's what we were doing oh so it has been it's been a little while years since we've done this it seems i think the last episode that we did was probably january it was our childhood episode yeah and i think it immediately followed the christmas theme special so yeah it's been 10 months wow so you know expect this to be a little bit rusty yes i as obvious already we don't even remember how we open up the show (laughs) which hey you know we'll get there eventually and if you notice that my my voice is a little bit hoarse today um that would be because this past weekend um we actually went to a haunted attraction in kinston north carolina and uh we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a split second so stay tuned. Lots of fun, uh, whatever you call it, scares, <laughs> memories. Yep, absolutely. So, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and jump into that. Let's right. jump into the the haunted attraction. Let's jump into the deep end of Kinston. In Kinston, North Carolina. <laughs> this place is called the Extreme Fair. Nope. No? Extreme. This place is called the Extreme Fair. Fear Scaregrounds. Scaregrounds, that's right. Because it's uh, on the fairgrounds, but yeah, Scaregrounds it is. Yep, so this this haunted house was actually suggested by Mark, um, and he unfortunately wasn't able to go. Yeah, bummer. Uh, But, hey, Mark, thanks for suggesting it, because it's possibly the best one that I've ever been to. Yeah, wow, way to go, Mark, coming in clutch. Oh, and I can definitely tell, so right before we started this show, Zach's wearing this shirt that's basically the same color as the backlighting. <laughs> and I'm like, um, it's also sleeveless. I'm like, dude, you've been hanging around Mark too much. <laughs> the sleeveless shirt. Yeah. Sleeveless shirt. I did Zach. my best Mark impression when we got out of the haunted house. I was told yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah, you so. were making fun of Mark last night. <laughs> <laughs> we might we might have to do an episode where we impersonate each other. There's an idea. And uh, switch roles for a, an episode, but we'll table that for later. Um, so, yeah, this haunted house, uh, haunted attraction, whatever you want to call it, um, very well done. Uh, we waited in line maybe a little more than an hour. Uh, took about 20 minutes to get through. However, the quality of the scares that was inside well made up for whatever time that you would normally spend at another haunted attraction. Um, how how are you feeling throughout, Josh? So, let's see. I don't think I've been but to about uh, three, four different haunted houses in my lifetime. How many have you been to? numerous like can't keep them on your fingers and toes count them on your fingers at least 15 20 and some of those are like repeats yeah yeah so i mean i've been to less than 10 for sure and uh most of the time when i go into a haunted house or trail or whatever it is uh it seems like you're being pushed the whole time and the one that was one thing i really liked about this one is the fact that there was no pressure from people coming behind you Mm -mm. Each scare was like an individual scare. It was like it was all devoted for you. For you. Yep. you know, uh, the setup, the scenes, the uh, where the, the scare came from. There was plenty of diversions, plenty of just. Yeah. Uh, there was at least three minutes in between each group that they sent through, if not oh, a little bit yeah, more sometimes. At least. Yeah. Um, which I, I included in my review to them, like something I was very grateful for, because mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than catching up to the group in front of you and literally having to stand still yeah. to let them get a little bit further ahead of you so you're not missing every right. scare that's in there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to hiccup. <laughs> It's a regular bodily function. Yeah, so there was, uh, <laughs> what, there's three different rooms and yep. or one outside 
maze, maze. catacomb place. But uh, but I think catacombs them, are inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true it is. Underground, yeah. more specifically. Yeah. Yeah. True it is. Uh, um, so the first one started off as a uh, asylum, like. Mm. Um, like this doctor was experimenting on his patients, injecting yep. them with things, and obviously it all went wrong. Otherwise, we wouldn't be there. Okay, so uh, <laughs> all right, at the very beginning, we walk into this room, and there's a TV up on the wall, and there's just one dude, and he's just like, he, he kind of talks to you like normal when you first walk in there. So I'm going to start making eye contact with the camera now because uh, I'm going to try to portray what this dude did. And he was just up there standing on a little box, and he was dressed kind of weird. And then... All of a sudden, he he kind of jumps into character, and he's like <laughs> <laughs> making eye contact with you so weirdly. Prolonged eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Prolonged and, eye contact. Uh, maybe uh, slowing down what he says, you know, to be really eerie and like to get you to really focus on him. But you're supposed to watch the TV because it's giving you like the backstory, yeah, of what's going on. So anyway like he he's just up there and you're watching the tv and all of a sudden he slams the wall you know <laughs> i don't know what he's got in his hand what did he have in his hand i don't think he had anything but he's like Dude. he slammed the box or something yeah in it. but anyway so he's like he's just up there occupying space and trying to scare you and he does he does very well and he's i guess at the very beginning we're watching the video you know and it's like man this is not gonna be good because it was like uh, cheese to mm-hmm. begin with but as soon as we left that cheese room <laughs> it was it was good from there on out yep and uh so we we got about two rooms in it was pretty standard you know your typical everyday run-of-the-mill haunted house attraction like you've got something some nasty room that's got blood splatter all over you know the first two rooms i was a little concerned and then we get into this third room and in this room, just to kind of paint you a picture, we come in on the basically the right side of the room. There's a couch, and then staggered a little bit more on the opposite side of the wall is another couch, and then to the far left of the room is a television that's got static on it. So, you know, I walk in, and the first thing I'm thinking is like, oh, yeah, poltergeist, you know. Mm-hmm. So we go kind of around the first couch, and we come up, and now the second couch is on my right. I'm, I'm in the front of the line. We've got uh, two people we brought, we brought along with us in the middle, and then Josh is at the back. And um, so anyways, I look at the, the couch because there's some something or someone sitting on it. And so I'm really trying to figure out, is this thing real or is it just a stuff, just some kind of test dummy? dummy. <laughs> and there was nobody around in or on the television when I looked at this dummy no. or this man sitting on the couch. And then about two seconds later, I see something out of the corner of my eye so i divert my attention to the television well now all of a sudden two seconds later there's a girl like bent over backwards on the static television basically if you can imagine like crab walking yeah or like the exorcist arched back you know i don't know if she was hiding behind the television i don't know if she dropped from the ceiling she had to have her feet in some type of device to get contorted like Dude, that. <laughs> something was up and from that moment i know both of my feet came up off the ground i start laughing hysterically and, and screaming it, it's literally like somebody turned on the faucet because i just immediately like started pouring tears from my face from laughing so hard and we were gone after that point and it was like it never let up and i don't it think it's not going. like a laugh like y'all are thinking like oh this is funny this is like a, a pretty much petrified <laughs> <laughs> gone into fight or flight mode and he's flying now <laughs> yes so, and i was the one at the beginning talking about i was going to be the pace setter so yeah, we didn't yeah. go through it too fast and Dude. here i am dragging my chain three of three people, people. <laughs> like but, yeah, I mean, it was great. Like, it didn't let up on the intensity after that point. It was like every single time I felt my heart rate starting to come back down, they jumped right back on you, yeah. and uh, they just kept at it. And I got out of that first house, and I literally i have never done this before in a haunted house, but as soon as we got to the exit, like, I raised my arms, and I was like, yes, <laughs> it's over. No, well, no, I, I can just relax. Like, well, I mean, semi like, yes, it's over, but mostly like, yes, this was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I got my money's worth. I have paid triple the price that we paid this past weekend and had triple the amount of time inside a haunted attraction and not felt a fourth of 
that I got my money's worth. Mm-hmm. And so just all around really well done. They've only been open two years at this point. The guy said they spend seven weeks building this thing from scratch on the fairgrounds. And then after October, they spend three weeks tearing it all back down because they haven't actually found a permanent location for it. So if this place ever gets, like, the ability to buy land and they're able to set up their structure, like, year-round and work mm-hmm. on it year-round and add stuff, they're going to be a force Dude. to be reckoned with yes. in North Carolina it for sure. It would be nasty for sure. So if you're anywhere in the area, if you're local, extreme, fair, nope. No nope. extreme fear scare grounds. There yeah. we go. Extreme. Which by the time you're watching this, Halloween season's gonna be over with. So yeah, keep it in mind for next so. year. Yeah. But yeah, just all around great time. And I believe like the group that you go with totally defines how good of a trip you're gonna have too. Mm-hmm. Cause like if you go with a group that's too large, you may never get that one scare that, you know, that you need to enjoy the trip. But you know, so And if you go with a group of people that aren't scared at you're just anything. walking through like stoic so why would you pay 25 bucks yeah. to like basically walk through a horror museum do those people go to scare grounds if they're not scared of anything do people know. do that i would really like to see mark stevens well mark uh, does it right so he does other people but do it. he's pretty stoic most of the time you'll get a jump scare out so of the weekend before stoic. you and mark go somewhere greensboro and it's is it just you two yeah. When y'all walk through your places, is it just you two? No, it's us combined with another group of four. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of your bigger places do is because they've got so many people waiting in line, they combine groups. And so sometimes you're going through with a group of eight to ten people. Mm-hmm. And, like, literally you're catching up with the group in front of you, and that group has caught up with the group in front of them because they're only a lot in, like, 30 to 45 seconds worth of buffer before you're, like, shoving the next group through your attraction. Yeah. And most of these bigger places, it's just a consistent walkthrough. So from the time you go into the first one, you go into the next one, you go into the next one. So there's really no chance once you get started to hold the line and allow – buffer times yeah i would expect the the extreme fear or scare grounds or whatever that's the name of it right extreme fear yeah scare grounds i got it right on my first time i think don't uh, rack to yeah to probably double you know or triple what they've done i mean just just by word of mouth and what you know we've said about them what i've heard about them from yeah. other people uh, it's getting around i think it's gonna it's gonna pick up well now next year or yeah Next year, uh, I did have a challenge. Uh, a friend of mine from high school, also named Zach, on Facebook mm. last night after I posted kind of my review on Facebook of the extreme fear scare, scare grounds. grounds. <laughs> Doesn't always, roll off always, the tongue well. well. I always want to say fair. Yeah. Because fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. My yeah. brain works like that. Anyways, so this uh, this friend of mine from high school commented on my post and said, you know, you ought to come out and uh, let us scare you at the one I work at. Mm-hmm. He's been in the haunt business for a while. Like I remember, uh, probably out of high school, like he was a uh, scare actor. Uh, he's I think he originally started in Hookerton. Anyways, so I, I commented back and I said, you know, what haunted house are you at? And he said, um, Mar Branch. So, uh, for those of you that don't know. Um, I've been to Mar Branch. I have not. Three times. Uh, I think once in 2010, maybe once in 2012, and I think once in 2013. And after the last time that I went, I was pretty much just done. Um, I'm not scared of people screaming at me, just like hollering obscenities (laughs) in my face. (laughs) Like, that just makes me angry. Um, <laughs> and so after the third time of, like, going through that, because the, the theme of the haunted house itself is, like, hillbilly haunt. So, like, I mean, that's my hometown. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> just hillbillies <laughs> running around screaming at each other. Uh, I don't have to pay to see that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just go down to Walmart. <laughs> 10 so o'clock. After the third time, I was like, you know what, I'm I'm pretty much done with this, and I wrote that one off. Um, now, he said, you know, there's a bunch of new people, scare actors, in there, and it's changed a lot since then. And so next year, uh, I'm putting it back on we're my gonna list. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a shot. I'm down. And we're going to see what happens. Um, as a matter of fact, 
uh, Taylor's first haunted house mm. was Mar Branch, uh, and I'll put that photo down below. Yeah, Taylor's one of the guys. From what I hear, you want Taylor there with oh, you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so you know, I think this was 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. We're you know pretty fresh out of high school, two three years, and uh, I just random randomly texted him one day because I think the group pulled out on me. Uh, for the haunted house, I was like, "Hey, you, do you like haunted houses?" And he was like, "You know, whatever." And so we go. We're waiting in line. We're like third from the door, and all of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, man, you know, I ain't never been to a haunted house, but I don't think I'm gonna like this." So, oh, now you tell now. me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Taylor's not a small fella. You know, he's he's a pretty big guy. Uh, but once we got in there, I found out very quickly. Yeah, he he did not like that. Mm -hmm. um, I typically volunteer to be first in line. So I was first in line. He was second in line, and they combined some other groups behind us. But from the first scare, I literally probably had bruises on my back from how hard he's shoving me, like, go, man, go. Like, why are you taking your time? Because I, I like when I can. I didn't last night or <laughs> this past weekend, uh, but – I like to take my time when I can and just kind of like soak it all in mm -hmm. and like admire the work that they put into it. So I'm going through kind of a, a, a stroll, the occasional hillbillies coming out screaming at me. And I'm like, Oh yeah, what's up? Um, but he's literally shoving me. And there was one animatronic thing that like came out and breathed fire or something like that. And he pushed me out of the way and hauled boogie through the rest of the, the haunted house and was outside waiting for me. Um, pretty proud of him though. Cause two occasions after that, uh, he tagged along with me and Mark to some haunted attractions. You but just can't get enough. After the third one, he has vowed to never go into one again. I'm going to see if I can twist his arm one more time. So, see what kind of pool I got. You know, <laughs> if, if we've got the blanks guys together. Mm, blank knows, scare reunion. Might not ride it off. Which, by the way, let's, let's go ahead and kind of segue, since we are talking about that, uh, into um, Taylor's absence uh, and kind of his future um, with the channel. Um, Taylor's had a lot going on recently, a lot of life changes, and uh, he's a pretty private guy. He likes to keep to himself. He's not a big social media person. <laughs> really? Um, Stop lying. Yeah. <laughs> no. And uh, so anyways, um, a lot of life changes, job changes. Move. Uh, yeah, moved. Uh, unfortunately, not much closer to us. Uh, just kind of lateral move. Same state now. That's and, the only um, good thing, I guess. You know, he's got online classes, college. I think he's going for his master's. And so he's a busy guy. And unfortunately, the the, the busynesses of life have really uh, trampled him hard recently. And so he's not made it to the last couple of film sessions. Um, we do hope to get him back in the studio soon. But rest your minds, rest your uh, – because we've had a couple of comments on our last couple of weeks' worth of content. Anytime we upload, like, a flashback content or, like, a snapshot of an old episode or something, like, there's people coming across that are oh, like, man, I miss, I miss Taylor. Taylor. Where's he I at? miss Taylor. And, uh, we do, too. We yeah, miss Taylor. Yeah, we do, too. And so um, show him some love, support, uh, you know, comment. You know, let him know how much you miss him. Uh, but he is not gone. He is still a part of the crew. Uh, he is a part of the uh, core crew and will remain as such regardless of how long it takes him to get back in the studio. Uh, so he's not going anywhere. Yeah, so. if he wants to or not, he's still going to be yeah. a part of the crew. We'll continue <laughs> on. So you won't see him missing off of any YouTube banners or anything like that unless he does something extremely nefarious and, like, robs a bank. Yeah. Um, then, unfortunately, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to uh, – part ways <laughs> all my t-shirts will be ruined i'll have to magic marker him out of it yeah which we won't go into detail but um if you're a fan of the try guys uh they've recently had a um a hiccup within their core group uh four guys you know sort of very similar to good mythical morning uh they worked their way up you know a massive following on youtube and unfortunately um one of their core crew members engaged in a uh relationship with one of their employees he was married mm. and um and so they they parted ways with him so now they're back to a core group of three um you no. would think try guys would be three anyway but <laughs> <laughs> try guys yeah maybe that fits better now <laughs> this show's gonna totally take off so taylor don't go doing anything nefarious <laughs> like robbing a bank or murdering someone because that will um 
kind of push our hands on the matter. And <laughs> so, anyways, Taylor will be back, and uh, we look forward to getting him back in the studio for more content. We love you, Taylor. In the meantime, we are trying to get some kind of rotating, uh, what we call guest crew members um into the studio uh trying out some different things auditions mm. uh so to speak because yeah. there are times when you know say taylor's not available or mark's not available and we have four person videos that we need to film and so it's, it's nice to be able to lean on somebody to come in and say hey we need you to fill in and just have them kind of be part of the crew for that session or for multiple sessions um you know in the past we've we've had guest crew members like josie um eric st stood in for an episode uh jared has done the last two sessions so he's on a pretty good role and the good news is uh from everything that we're reading you know every guest that stepped in so far you guys have enjoyed um and uh, and just really um welcomed yeah, welcome to like what they bring to the table because out of all of those people that we've just named and including our core group, we're all very different. We That's what I'm here for. I'm just like giving Zach a few words every now and then. I'm just going to let him run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime he's missing a word, I'm like, what can it be? What can it be? <laughs> no, oh, please, <laughs> please speak up. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just all very different. And that's what, that's the magic of the core group. Uh, me, you know, Josh, Mark taylor you know kind of the the original group is we all bring something very very different to the table and none of us are alike in our personalities our comedic styles um you, would you like to add anything to that <laughs> no you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> i'm done here oh my goodness oh uh, just playing yeah i mean a lot of what well, a lot of what you said is legit truth no we're all different we all have our own little great things we bring to the table and um when some of those people are out or whatever or one of those people is out uh some of the games that we do we it requires even numbers or or requires you know just help that three of us or two of us it's not gonna not gonna flow near as well so yep. with the with the help of some guests man it, it totally makes things go better totally makes things work yep so thank y'all for being patient with us as we know it's not always going to be another hiccup <laughs> there's those bodily functions again so thank y'all for you know sticking with us and, and being patient with us you know in a perfect world we'd like to have the same people all the time every time um with the occasional guest popping in uh but you know life happens and so we have to be uh reactive uh to those circumstances so looking forward to see what the rest of season three has to bring um it's kind of weird to think about but just in a matter of months we'll be celebrating three Season years three anniversary coming yeah. around the corner i know i know one of the topics we were going to talk about was our some of our favorite episodes of season three so seeing how season three is coming to an end um i know we've got we had planned to talk about some of our favorite episodes so yeah. uh what you got in mind I'd love to get, uh, if you're watching uh, in the comment section down below, I'd love to get what you guys think are some of our best episodes so far this season. Um, but just off the top of my head, uh, man, I, I mean, we've already had so much. Um, the Whisper Challenges are some of my favorites. I mean, it's so simple. Yep. Um, and yet it's extremely fun to do, and it's hilarious to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so some of my, I'd say one of my favorites is, uh, man, I'm still a fan of the chest chop challenge. Still got to be, got to be up there. Um, but also like the, um, the, the, like, does it work? Does it work challenges? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm so totally the cereal. Yeah. The cereal or even like the, the different flavors of milk that we did oh different flavors of milk yeah you know how we put different like oh you mean the kool-aid yeah in the milk yeah does that too yeah yeah trend busters <laughs> I, just, I, I enjoy eating things i guess obviously so. <laughs> even if they're not good um <laughs> and i think I, I honestly had kind of forgotten until i started doing some research for this particular question but the hip-hop 
video oh, like where word. we tried the hip hop. No. And um what was the other one that was really, really uh cringy? Good? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was around that same I mean you can't forget Mr Mr. Josh doing his Mr. H impression. Oh, that was uh, that's that hard was to believe season that's this. three. Yeah, this season. That was the second episode of this season. So. so another one that just popped into my mind is the um fail in the blanks. I still love that one. That was season two. No. Yeah. No. Didn't we just do one? We did, but it hasn't aired yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be a good episode. Yeah. Of you course just it wait. Is. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna hear on this show. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Yeah. So anyways, you know, me and Mark were talking the other day on the way to the the haunted house in Greensboro, and I was telling him, like, one of the things that I want to do, like, when we're, when we get a little bit bigger as a channel, when somebody loses fell in the blanks is actually, like, pay mm. to put a billboard up. Yes. And I uh, have that role in, like, our Public hometown scrutiny. for a week. <laughs> I think that'd be extremely hilarious. But for now, we'll set her for the the uh, the graphic that goes up on social yeah. media. So be on the lookout for that. In Social punishment. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about the other day, um, I think about really weird, deep stuff sometimes. I know, you really do. And then you hit me up about it most of the time. <laughs> and it's so random. It's like either it hits me like when I'm laying in bed at night or it's just the most random times. But anyways, I was thinking the other day, like, if the events of 2020 had never happened, you know, the whole world shuts down, this would not be a thing. <laughs> uh, like, we wouldn't be doing no. tab. We wouldn't be doing blanks no one asked for. There would be no channel because that all got started because of what happened in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. So, like, my brain sits there and is thinking almost three years later, let's just say two and a half years later, a lot has happened because of blanks no one asked for in my life, and mm -hmm. I think all of our lives, respectively. So, like, I just start thinking, like, what would be different if March 2020 never happened and life, as we know it, continued on without a hiccup? Mm -hmm. Like, think about that. Hmm. Like what? What is different? And I would have one of my days out of the month back, <laughs> <laughs> and it would be miserable. Yes, <laughs> I would be doing anything else but this. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, Mark and and Taylor and I, I feel like hung out on a regular basis prior to that time, and when the channel started. You know, it was just the three of us. You know, I don't want people to forget that. Like, you come on like a pro, like mm, a couple of pro. weeks or months into the into the scene as, need I remind you, a guest mm -hmm. crew member, like not a part of the, the core crew. Um, pretty cool. I always have to revisit that and bring that up. I, I do enjoy that fact that I was not like <laughs> the original, but I guess I've been grandfathered into the original. Uh, no, you, you, you aced your audition. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, and just thinking back to that, like prior to that time, correct me if I'm wrong, but outside of like the occasional church activity where we interact with one another, we didn't really hang out mm -mm. just the two of us no like it was always in like a group setting or like a game night but you know marriage retreat you know we actually met like on a marriage retreat yes uh, so that was that's pretty cool. where like i guess the fun kind of began yeah. the the bromance that we have the that, bromance that all our friends talk about <laughs> they've got they've got the the rub it in and say you know that we're so close yeah. and we date and stuff <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard that one, but, <laughs> you know, the bromance is real, right? Yeah, so I think, you know, when I think about that, the the first thing that comes to mind is if March 2020 doesn't happen, would we have stayed on that same trajectory path? Hmm. Like, I, for me, blanks and almost being forced, not forced, because we do it willingly. We love to do it. Yes. Uh, but getting together that one night or that one day a month for the film sessions mm -hmm. has really, in my opinion, 
strengthened our friendship uh, on a number of different levels. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure along the way somewhere, you know, that would have organically happened. But that definitely sped up the process. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, really, for real, honestly, would it have? It, I think it would just continue as business as usual. Like, we get together on game night with, like, a bunch of other folks, yeah. and it's never like a – uh, a Zach and Josh friendship. It's just more of a Zach and Josh kind of mutual acquaintance. Yeah, mutual acquaintance. acquaintance. Yeah, so that I mean, for me, that's the way I see it continuing on. If this doesn't, right. you know, uh, talking about blanks or uh, blanks no one asked yeah. for uh, doesn't happen, that's what it continues on as. So that's and, and that's really sad. And that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. I, this is weird to say, but I'm I'm glad things happened the mm-hmm. way that they did. Um, my life looks a lot differently now because of blanks no one asked for, and you know people can say what they will about some of the stupid things that we do on the yes. internet. They're um, stupid, we and know. we do some very stupid things on the internet that's recorded for everyone to see and forever ever until the end of time. Um, but it's brought a lot of experiences to my life that's really helped me just kind of break outside of my shell. Uh, cause believe it or not, unless I know you, I'm a very reserved person. I don't yep. do well in social interactions where I don't know people. I feel very awkward talking to people I don't know. Um, and so within the, the confines of the studio, no one asked for, I'm, I'm able to kind of show a side of myself that I wouldn't normally show in front of other people, yep. uh, which is kind of odd because I'm displaying that side for way more people uh, on the internet than right. I would be in just like a gymnasium full of people. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so I'll speak some truth to that right there. Just like the other day, we've got, we've got this these business cards printed out, you know, oh, yeah. and I'm so down with like just randomly walking up to people. I want to do it so bad, but Mr. Zach is like so... <laughs> <laughs> no, not not some random new person. Why I can do it? I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I I enjoy the fact that I can just walk up to a random person and, and start a conversation. Yeah. Um. I guess when I was little, my mom always like you. You've never met a stranger, have you? I'm like, no, not really. They're just human people like I am. <laughs> you hope <laughs> for the most part. Ah, an alien. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, Zach speaking truth when he when he says that he's not like super dude, and and it's it's obvious whenever we've attempted to film something outside of the studio, no one asked for. Like in here, it's just us, and I also and I've talked about this, and that's we, weird too. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not quite as weird when we did our our first live tab, and then when we did our live. Um, uh, event with me, Josh, and Mark. Um, it, the safety net of being able to edit out the things I don't like is no longer there. So, like, real life is going on outside of the studio, <laughs> and you can't just chop out the parts you don't want to keep. No. Um, and so that's something I'm trying to get better at. Uh, as we continue to grow, we'd like to do more stuff like that outside of the studio and incorporate the outside world into our content. Um, that's a stumbling block I'm going to have to get over because yeah. I, I think I may have talked about this in our childhood episode, but uh, just to go backwards a little bit, like uh, 16 years old, I'm a much different person than I am now. And you no way, dude, <laughs> I mean, I was always reserved, always like a recluse. And so uh, I've come a long ways in 24 years. That's bad math. 14 years. Uh, but I've still got a long ways to go. So uh, more to come on that. But any comments? <sighs> I've th- commented enough. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, blanks no one asked for doesn't happen. Let's let's talk about individual, like, experiences that we would not have experienced hmm. if blanks doesn't happen. We're just carrying on with our, our mundane lives. Mm-hmm. Like, what? has occurred to you or what have you done through this vehicle of entertainment that you otherwise wouldn't have ever experienced this vehicle Hmm. dude like while you're you're thinking i don't want to overstep or talk over you but i see the gears turning so keep yes keep thinking thinking like i've been duct taped to a door (laughs) 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 i've eaten a dehydrated zebra tarantula (laughs) 
I've eaten the world's hottest gummy bear. I've eaten a ton of hot stuff that I never would have touched otherwise. Yeah. I do get a, a sense of bravery uh, or stupidity, yeah. depending on how you look at it yeah. when you're in front of the camera. Boldness that I've never had before. You're doing it for other people. Yeah. You're doing it for the sake of entertainment, not just to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have never done a lot of these things that I'm naming off now. The cinnamon challenge. like mm. No, never um, would have touched that. You know, and then the list just keeps going on and on and on and on of, of things that, like, I, I've never worked with a green screen. Yeah. Um, I, I've never really edited anything uh, outside of, like, this cheap phone software that I had that I used to edit videos and, and pictures on. And um, So if you're out there and you're thinking about doing something, but you don't want to start because you don't feel like you're ready. That's the wrong mindset. And that's the mindset that I had for the longest time mm -hmm. about a YouTube channel. Prior to Blank starting in March of 2020, I wanted to do some kind of content creating years prior. But I felt like I wasn't ready. I felt like I didn't have the tools to make it happen. And so I prolonged it and I put it off yeah. far too long. How much further along we would be now yeah. had i started back when i originally had those thoughts yeah it's just like learning to read or doing math or whatever you know it, you start off you can't do one plus one but you know it's just a building everything's a building block so uh keep keep stepping keep adding yeah, and the, eventually you'll hopefully get to where you want to be the time to start is now um i saw a quote uh one time and i'm just going to paraphrase it because i can't remember it right off hand but um if when you start no that's that's the wrong thing if when you start <laughs> uh it was something to the effect of like you know if you wait and start what you want to do a year from now you could have been a year into doing what you've always wanted to do mm. not only that but you'd be a year ahead of where you would be a year from now and that's very true if you go back and you look at our first couple of months worth of content you'll see like this is a guy who's not done much editing <laughs> or content creating or graphic generation or anything like that but over time you start to see the extra bill bells and whistles thrown in there and that's just strictly from doing it living it messing up screwing up seeing what works what doesn't work Fixing, and then adjusting along yeah. the way um so Dude, yeah, five years what were from those now? three dudes doing in the living room? <laughs> <laughs> the living room with a dining room table, moving couches around, uh, filming off of their cell phones. Yeah. And now we've got a Mac, we've got two cameras, we've got mics, microphones, we've lights, got lights, green screen. We've got a studio. Yes. So it, definite upgrades. That's your encouragement. Start now. Yeah. Don't wait because you're only prolonging where you start um and where you start from so like what are some of your experiences that you've had that like hmm. you're just like dude i never would have done that if i wasn't a part of this ridiculous oh YouTube i would channel. never get on uh on the tv or, or on the um on camera and sing i would never do that <laughs> 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 or even try make an attempt to sing dude I, i'm gonna pause right there just because i have to bring this up or i'm gonna lose it um <laughs> One of our first experiences together when we had just like met, we go on this marriage retreat, you know, couples, we have a great time. I think it was like the mountains or something. We come back not too long after that. Uh, we were part of a Valentine's banquet. Oh, my word. And so I don't know Josh that well just yet. You know, we're still on that acquaintance type deal, but I thought I knew him better than I actually did. <laughs> and so I'm hosting the gig. Uh, I've got my red Valentine's blazer on, Day banquet, pink right? Shirt. Yep. And so I'm hosting everything. And then once we do newlywed game and all that kind of stuff, at the end, we do karaoke. And so we've got a list of songs that I've built that are like love songs and like it's dry. And I, I don't always want to be that guy that's just like, okay, I'm going to sing. Anybody else want to sing? No? Okay, I'll sing again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, I, I listen to the crickets chirp for a little while. Nobody's biting. I'm like, dude, this is a pretty big portion of this, like, Valentine's banquet is the love song karaoke. Mm -hmm. I lock eyes with Josh, who I think is wearing a fedora. I, I was, I believe. And, yes, uh, yes. So I'm like, Josh, come up on the stage. And I could see him just like so uncomfortable <laughs> sinking down. I thought, oh no. I, I was, I'm <laughs> just thinking like he's, he is so much more confident. So, so I'm him. pretty much brand new to the place at yeah. the time, too. It's not like somewhere I've been for 
for years and years and gotten known all the people that are going there too yeah it's just like out of the blue hey let's bring this new guy up on stage yeah <laughs> to perform in front of i guess eventually it was awkward enough to where he came up on stage and we attempt to do it um forever and ever amen yeah. uh, by randy travis mm-hmm. and like he's not singing anything <laughs> I'm singing. It's just not loud. <laughs> but and I also didn't realize like after the fact, like he's like, I didn't really know that song that well. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who doesn't know yeah. that song? I know parts and pieces, but it's like the whole. I mean, even today, I was like, man, what? what, what I don't even. I don't know that song. So that that's well. that's one of my first memories of Josh. Yeah, for me to sing a song, I need to know it almost word for word to feel confident. Yeah, and not in my <laughs> confidence realm was that song. <laughs> So, like, singing on camera. Yep. That's not something I uh, I, I particularly think I do well. Um, I don't no, know. Com- do confidence in some of my in, – yeah. in the stuff that I do. I need more confidence in what I do. Yeah. Like, um, like, going up and talking to people, I think I can do that. But it's like singing, nah, can't do that. But anyway, so I need to work on my confidence. Um, you- oh, so, like, going to – goodwill and shopping with you guys that was season three yeah, yeah. So, so that's that, this season yeah that was a uh, that was a very fun episode and just getting out runway and and doing stuff we don't usually do you yeah know? like we always come here we always shoot videos here uh getting out into the world is is kind of what i like to do anyway so um he exploded a watermelon yeah with rubber I, bands I thought about that too yeah i, I would have never done that never you yeah hours wrapping a rubber band around a watermelon you sir have your face on a t-shirt multiple t-shirts yes yes. uh as a matter of fact myself and ambassador katie own the same t-shirt yes with your face blown up on it really big yeah i look like Like, a witch (laughs) (laughs) otherwise i don't know of any excuse you'd have to put your face on a t-shirt yeah if Unless I'm just not alive anymore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, one of those creepy shirts. Yeah. I hate those shirts. Uh, maybe R. sorry, R. offense if like you do that, but <sighs> I, something about walking around with a dead person on your shirt, yeah, with angel wings, mm-hmm. is just strange to me. But I'm sorry. Yeah, I maybe I'm, have said I'm that. so glad you and uh, Katie own a t-shirt <laughs> of my face. I have multiple t-shirts with my face on it, so. Uh, I've got a hoodie. I've got a and two and, t-shirts and two t-shirts with, of different colors with the same graphic on with my face. Yes, blue and purple. Yep. All right. So you know, there's there's been two burning questions uh, that our audience has been dying to know the answers to over the last couple of months. I hope I can help. One of those questions we've already addressed. Where's Taylor? Now you know. The second question is where is Leroy Jenkins? Uh, we've not seen Leroy since, um, he read us the night before Christmas. Oh yeah. That enjoyable um, story. That was back in December of 2021. It has almost been a year. And it's almost December, 2022. Yes. Uh, three episodes of Leroy. We had the original prank episode, uh, with ambassador Katie at the shaved ice. Then we had, uh, life and living with Leroy Jenkins mm-hmm. where he gave some, really solid yes. sound advice oh, yeah. on how to live your life and then we had the night before christmas with leroy uh and there's been nothing hmm. uh have you heard from leroy well like, i did uh actually call him on his cellular device <laughs> and uh he has it, one of those yes uh, whether he knows how to work it or not <laughs> he's butt dialed me quite Gotta a be few a times jitterbug. yeah for sure he's one of those um characters who doesn't you know make contact unless he must so uh yeah he's just been he's been away he's just away he's away. traveling yeah doing a little traveling probably running up them credit cards probably trying to <laughs> learn some more life lessons <laughs> whether it's the hard way or the easy way he's gonna learn yeah so hopefully <laughs> i'm so glad you have that insight josh i've not been privileged to yeah. have contact with him but hopefully very shortly he will be back to give us some more life lessons yeah uh, i think the life lessons were very well enjoyed hopefully no one's actually adhering to that advice mm-hmm. um but it's still good to know what not to do yeah, yeah. in life so uh, he did say something about uh a, a job that he had been working another on. yeah you know Two weeks or so, you know, as yeah. he says, and a new one. Yep, that's right. He's, um, he's still living that motto. Get a job, quit. <laughs> yeah, don't like it, quit. quit. 
Oh, uh, yeah. So hopefully more Leroy content to come uh, soon. Maybe we'll get Leroy to join us for a game or something in oh, the studio. And dude. when you're not available to be here, of course. Yeah. Um, which, you know, uh, going back to the, the 2020 thing, like, and I know I'm jumping around a lot here, but. To go from two guys who don't really interact outside of group settings to having a pretty decent chunk of content that is strictly Zach and Josh, that's a pretty big yeah. leap. Yeah, so at, at one point in time, I, there was like an episode or t- or y'all were trying to get together on a day, Yeah, and I was like, please don't do it. Please don't do it. I, I've been like in every episode ever since i've started so it's like i don't want to miss this is my this is my hobby that i actually like yeah uh you know some some people have hobbies you know and it don't matter if they miss uh miss it from time to time this is one that like if they set a date there's very little that is going to trump that that hobby so uh i take this hobby seriously even though it doesn't look like it sometimes or sound like it uh so yeah no i i appreciated that um and i didn't really know to that effect like yeah i straight up told zach i was like please don't do it that day because there's no way i can make it uh i don't know what it was it was birthday anniversary something i don't know what it was no no it was a softball was game um oh so like, yeah so make it sound like <laughs> no 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 so um and just to kind of give you the the premise we were filming uh it was the film session where it was me you mark uh jared and seth mm, um and right. so we met for the day we were gonna film some at the beginning then Jared, and, I mean, sorry, um, Josh and Seth, Sefi, sorry, um, had a softball game, and then they were going to come back and finish filming that evening. And I was basically under the assumption for, like, productivity. I'm like, all right, you guys go do your softball game. Like, while you're gone, we can film some filler content. And then that's when you were basically like, dude. Please, no, don't do it Don't film me. without me there. <laughs> and I had to read it a couple times because I was like, is he – joking like is this serious and then like the more i read it i kind of got the tone of the text i was like dude like this guy really takes this seriously yeah, i take this stuff and seriously. so <laughs> you don't get to see like an emotional side of josh very often where he kind of lets the 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 veil down and lets you kind of peek yeah look through my blinds it. <laughs> um but you know that it became very real for me at that moment and i was like yep all right yeah no yeah, we won't and and we didn't we no, we held didn't. off thank you till thank you got you. back so um communication yeah. y'all it's it's key sometimes and is the way you say it you know yeah uh, what you, it's what you, it's not what you say but how you say it that's true that's very true like you can always get progressively worse but you can never go from worse to progressively like easier said, you yeah. know. So and, and like, had you not brought that up that day, you probably would have filmed. Without I would have filmed without you. And then if you really felt that way, like, I mean, I, I mean, it, just based off the text, like that would have you'd, you'd have been hurt a little bit. I probably right? would have been a little hurt. You know, those like, episodes would have come out, and, and like, maybe if that ever happens, I'll be like, well, my streak's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, like you said you know communication like and i feel like as a group within our little mm-hmm. bond like we, we try to communicate fairly well um and so that that was a nice little insight of yeah. information even though we're dudes and we're notorious for not communicating well we do pretty well for this set of four dudes yep um and this is a kind of a really random sidebar but uh yeah tell your friends you love them like uh, and, <laughs> and I do like I, I love my friends. I tell them that, or I try to tell them that fairly frequently, because uh, I did go through a period of time where I didn't have any close friends. I had acquaintances, I had a lot of acquaintances, mm-hmm. but I didn't have anybody that I could really depend on. Um, and don't take that for granted because that could be taken away from you at any given time uh, due to a lot of things that are outside of your control. Uh, so family members, friends, like if you don't normally tell them you love them, tell them, like, I guarantee you it will strengthen your bond, uh, rather than just being acquaintances. Mm. Acquaintances are disposable. Uh, they could come and go at any given time. All of my friends from high school, basically with the exception of Taylor, 
were acquaintances. Mm-hmm. And I found that out very quickly once I graduated high school and life happened. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad to say uh, I don't have many acquaintances nowadays. I do have uh, a good, solid group of friends. So. Don't yeah, we like totally uh, use the word friend too uh, loosely because a lot of what we had have is acquaintances. Yeah, um, but for the most part, the uh, you you know exactly who your friends are. So, anyways, um, it's good stuff. I'm glad I'm glad I have the group that I have, and uh, I don't know of many other people I'd be doing these weird and ridiculous things with. So. Mm-hmm. Look, we're going to wrap up this episode of Talking About Blanks. Uh, I believe this is installment number seven. Um, and so we're glad to be back from a hiatus. Uh, we were doing the third Thursday of every month. I don't know if we'll be able to make it um, as consistent as we were before. Um, and so just stay tuned. We'll do special episodes when we can. Uh, and let us know some topics you want us to talk about, be it an entire episode or just questions that you want us to answer. Anything as we close? I just want to let you know that I love you, and I love you. (laughs) And I love you and you, too. And that rhymed. Yeah. (laughs) Without further ado, this has been Talking About Blanks. If you can fill in the blanks, we will talk about it. You guys have a great November, and we will maybe see you back shortly uh, with another special edition of Talking About Blanks. But wait, there's more. Still got that itch for more blanks no one asked for? Click that bottom left video down there to see the content that YouTube thinks would be the best for you.